What's up, eggheads? I'm Ben Tibbles with New Egg. We're back in the studio, this time with JJ from Asus, who's going to tell us all about these Z790 motherboards and the latest and greatest from Asus. JJ, thanks for stopping by the studio. Appreciate you. Glad yeah. to have you. Fantastic to be here, man. I'm always excited to be able to come down to Newegg and be able to actually talk about the latest and greatest in terms of not only what we're doing on the motherboard side, but of course how we're complementing the latest and greatest from Intel with the brand new Z790 chipset, as well as these 13th gen series processors. I think a lot of people have been excited by Raptor Lake and what's gonna be coming in terms of this platform. And of course, with this full lineup that we've got, whether you wanna go small form factor or you wanna go with something like a full EATX based build, we're gonna get covered for this build. And so really, or what are we getting by going over to 13th gen? Well, 13th gen is gonna be bringing us, I think even a greater level of performance than the prior generation. And the important thing is that some of you might be coming from, of course, much older platforms. You might be coming from, you know, maybe eighth gen, ninth gen based platforms. Maybe you're coming for, <laughs> maybe you're coming over from maybe an older HEDT platform. So maybe something like X58, X79, X99. You're going to see a huge uplift in performance, much higher clock speeds. Keep in mind that the highest in part, like the 1300K, mm -hmm. you're talking about boosts all the way up to 5.8 gigahertz. That's an awesome <laughs> level of performance. Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't even yet talked about overclocking capabilities. And definitely. 5.8 is without overclocking? That's correct. That's out of the box experience. So, I mean, that's already a, a huge level of performance that they're giving you right out of the box. And of course, a lot of great technologies that you have between the P cores and the E cores, which I've also seen an uplift here within this generation as well. So we, regardless if you're talking about gaming or whether you're talking about lightly threaded workloads, so whether you're talking about like, you know, photography or you're talking about desktop productivity or of course gaming, these processors are going to give you a great experience in either one of those scenarios. But the thing I'm really actually excited about is, is that with the Alder Lake, we saw the introduction of DDR5. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, with Raptor Lake, we're also seeing the maintaining of DDR5, but we're also seeing a newer and even higher performing what's called IMC. So okay. you might ask me, JJ, what's an IMC, right? I was just about to, <laughs> yes. That's actually, hey, JJ, what's an IMC? That's actually referred to as the integrated memory controller. And so the memory controller is actually what defines the specification support. And so I think you were asking me about, is DDR4 still the thing here? Yeah, these these do are, are still compatible with DDR4? Yes, and so that's the great thing here is that we're still maintaining a kind of a diverse portfolio here. So you've got flexibility. If you want to spend a little bit less, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe you want to transition over your DDR4 kit, you can go ahead and do that. You can pick up boards like what we've got right here with our Tough Gaming series. This will be a DDR4 based board. You still get all those great features you're going to get in terms of Z790, in terms of the chipset specification support. You can support any one of the 13 gen series CPUs, but you'll be using DDR4. On the model name, it will actually tell you Wi-Fi D4. If it says D4, it's a DDR4 motherboard. If it doesn't say D4, guess what? DDR5? That's right, exactly. <laughs> On the DDR5 side though, the thing that's really exciting is of course we see an uplift in terms of the baseline memory support. So in the prior generation, um, Intel's baseline memory specification was 4800 MT. Okay. Now, we actually saw that in the real world, um, with many CPUs, you would comfortably be able to overclock those actually memory kits to probably about 6000 MT, if actually not higher. It wasn't uncommon to maybe even see, you know, 62, maybe even 6400 MT, especially within what's called uh, one SPC, one DPC, or essentially two DIMM configurations. Okay. But for this new generation, Raptor Lake really takes it to a whole nother level in terms of the DDR5 scaling capabilities. In fact, pretty much the entirety of our board lineup is being validated for memory frequencies at or above 7000 MT. Right, so this and is that before any overclocking, or is that, that that actually would be an overclocked frequency? So okay. there is there is an uplift in this generation. You actually have gone at a higher frequency than you had in the original Alder Lake based platform. So you're now actually above 5,000 MT in terms of the default memory frequency. So it's even sure. faster at yeah, default. Yeah. Then of course Alder Lake and Z690 was our 12th gen series, um, so you get an automatic kind of performance uplift. Awesome. Well, I'll, I'll admit to being a little lost when it comes to the difference between ROG Strix. ROG Maximus, I, they're all very cool. ROG in my head just means it looks real cool, but I would love to know what it actually means. I mean, Republic of Gamers, I, I know that. No, no worries, that. no worries. And for anybody watching us right now, let me know in, in, in the comments, do you actually say ROG or do you say it the right way, which is ROG? So, oh, so now no. you guys know. So, um, but that being noted, that being noted, in terms of kind of the board Cut series, all of that. Tell me the difference, because I don't know the difference between ROG Strix an ROG Maximus or any ROGs. I just know it looks cool. It breaks down in pretty much an easy way of going good, better, best. Okay. And so when we talk about kind of our good or our entry, that's gonna be with the Tough Gaming Series. So with Tough Gaming Series, kind of the focus and the mantra is gonna be that we wanna give you a board that is gonna be stable, reliable, give you kind of all the core specifications you're looking for, whether it's gonna be from USB to networking to gaming grade audio, all the kind of key specification support, but what you might not see might be maybe more specialized features and functions which are designed kind of for enthusiasts. An example of this could be maybe like the 
RG Maximus series might have like an ESS Sabre DAC audio chip on the motherboard. Sure. So it both have good quality audio designs, but the Maximus takes it up to a whole nother level. Yeah. Another example might be that the Maximus series might have something like a dedicated water cooling zone header so that you can do temperature inlet and outlet and flow monitoring all natively on the motherboard. Oh. Now, if you're not doing custom water cooling, do you need that? No. Um, there might be also other elements like the aesthetic refinement, right? Like on something like, of course, on the extreme board, you have that really cool anime matrix display. You have the OLED live dash display. Those are really cool. But again, you know, not necessarily every user is going to want that type of If you're of working with a case that's not going to show it off. Or, like... or, or, or maybe again, you, you maybe just, you want something that's going to be stable and reliable, but you don't necessarily want to pay for kind of more, more premium design aesthetic, right? Sure. So that's where you're going to see some kind of differences. Now, the next step up after tough gaming is actually going to be on this side of the Defense, which would be our ROG Strix series. So the ROG Strix series is kind of what we really focus as being our kind of sweet spot. It's focused really at the enthusiast. So it's a great uh, representation of a boards that are going to have uh, an upgrade with respect. Keep in mind that regardless of which board you take a look at on the ROG Strix lineup, ROG Strix in every respect will always carry higher end set of specifications than the Tough Gaming series. Okay. So that means you're going to have more expansion for M.2, you'll have more USB ports, you'll have a higher grade audio design, you'll have a higher quality VRM design, you'll have higher performing thermal solution it doesn't matter every single core specification will always be leveled up to essentially go to that next level another kind of cool element will be also within the RG Strix lineup is that you'll have essentially different options in terms of the ID design where in tough gaming you're essentially gonna have that a kind of monochrome design aesthetic but in ROG Strix you'll also get the option to be able to step up to of course a white colorway so that's going to be really popular you know we have really I think that actually the most expansive kind of white ecosystem from power supplies to coolers to chassis to monitors peripherals yeah. it doesn't matter we literally make white in our entirety of our product line and last but not least when we go into Maximus, Maximus is really kind of the representation of the best of the best. Our goal there is to really try to make sure that every feature, function, and design specification where we can push the envelope, whether it's going to be aesthetically, whether it's going to be for overclocking, whether it's going to be for kind of niche focuses, that's what we're going to be doing on the Maximus series. We've spent a lot of time and effort here that there's, I know people that are kind of anti-RGB, so Team Dark, and then there's people that are Team RGB. The great thing is that these boards look fantastic in either scenario. So if sure. you're somebody that just wants to go and disable the RGB lighting, the boards are going to still have a really clean, strong ID design. But at the same time, if you want to go ahead and light it up, and you get able to that take performance boost that comes with RGB. <laughs> Definitely, if you want to go ahead and level it up in that regard, it's going to also look good. Obviously, this looks cool, especially with the two screens on there. And I love this side. You guys, I don't know if you can really see that. There's the side uh, RGB over there. Very cool. So one of the distinguishing elements that we would find on the Maxima series is going to be something like the integrated support for uh, Quick Charge 4 Plus. And so essentially what that just means is it's going to be up to 60 watt charging from the internal USB-C header. Oh wow. So that's pretty crazy because essentially that means if you just run a cable to the front of mm -hmm. the actual motherboard right here, connect that to your chassis, you could be able to fast charge like a Zen Phone 9, an RG Phone 6, or even <laughs> something like a Zenbook Duo, right? Sure. You can literally do 60 watts of charging from that front USB port. So that's the type of feature you would see on the uh, ROG Maximus, but not say Tough Gaming or the uh, ROG Strix. That's correct. And really the goal here is that we want to be able to have a design that's complementary to the architecture of the CPU. You might say, yes, you might go over to a Maximus board and it might have more power stages and even higher rated power stages. But even if we were taking a, take a look at like something like the Prime Dash A board, um, you would still get a very performant VRM design. And even if you wanted to run the 3900K on this board, versus on the extreme board, mm -hmm. the experience would effectively be parity. You're not gonna essentially get lower performance um, by going with this board as you would go with this board. Okay. Um, this one might be maybe a little bit more thermally efficient just because it has a little bit more to kind of spread out, if sure. that kind of makes sense. And also you might get the heat sinks might even be a little bit more performant in terms of dissipating more heat. But overall, you can still have a great stock or overclocked experience on any one of these boards. Okay. Now, uh, one of the other cool things that I think holistically is a really cool feature that we actually introduced last year in terms of Z690, but we're maintaining it and we're actually offering it on more motherboards this generation is actually going to be an awesome feature that we call Q-Release. So the Q-Release technology is actually something that I think I'm going to actually want to demo for you guys. So I can push this button without blowing something up? Yep, 100%. I've been told that before. Now, JJ, I just happen to have one of these laying around. 
That's our, our very cool. Uh, that's the ROG Strix 4090 OC. So brand new graphics card and it's perfect to actually allow us to show exactly what I was talking about earlier, which is the Q release design. So um, essentially, we all know kind of this pain point that normally what would happen is we would install a graphics card and uh, you end up actually having this kind of limited limited access in terms of being able to actually depress the retention clip, which would allow you to normally eject the graphics card, right? And now also with so many boards having more M.2 slots, we now need to maybe more frequently be able to access the board. So we have to remove the graphics card. More frequently. Yeah, to be able to actually get to maybe some of those M.2 slots sure. that would be underneath your graphics card, right? So why don't you go ahead and install the graphics card and we can show people how this works. With pleasure. Just line it up like so. Yep. And we got it locked in there. So now pretty much the graphics card would be locked in and it would be installed. And so if I go ahead and hold this down, we can see right here, I can't remove the graphics card. It's pretty much locked in place. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hold this down and why don't you go ahead and push the Q release button and then pull the graphics yes. card out. I love pressing buttons. Whoa! And so we can see it's a really smooth and easy process. And so the great thing is that that feature, now before, we used to only have it on maybe some of the higher end series. It's gonna be on the Tough Gaming model, it'll be on the ROG Strix model, and it's even on the Maximus model, of course, because that's our highest end series. So a really cool feature to just make sure that the build experience is a little bit more streamlined, a little bit simpler for you. So moving beyond the Q release feature, we actually have a number of other really cool features that help to just streamline the PC DIY build experience. Now the thing is with these next gen drives, because they're gonna have higher performance, like I said, they're also gonna put out more heat. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we now have what we call a dual heat sink design. So you're gonna have, again, a heat sink, right, that would cover you from the top, but then you're also going to have a heat sink that will be on the underside. One of the last cool things uh, I wanna go ahead and touch on here is gonna be also some other things that we've done for you know builders out there that are maybe interested in going with a smaller form factor based system. I was very interested in this. I see this, or we, we have to take it up to 88 miles an hour. This does look like a flux capacitor. It is pretty sweet. That's actually uh, what we call the actual ROG Hive. And so um, in our kind of normal kind of mini ITX based boards, they've already been extremely popular with the community. We always kind of up the ante in terms of trying to pack in a huge amount for the SSF crowd. We actually implemented the Hive. So the Hive is gonna be a cool little breakout box that will connect via one of the USB ports that you're gonna see on the rear. And we haven't necessarily talked a huge amount on IO, but you'll definitely see that on all the boards. But this little breakout box is pretty sweet because it will give you a USB pass-through. You'll also have the ability to control your volume on it. You can do one-touch ASUS AIC overclocking on it. Um, there's a flex key button, which actually would allow you to map different functions that you have available to you, hence why it's called the flex key. Uh, there's also even audio pass-through options on here. So it's a really cool little breakout box that comes included with the unit, and it actually even has a magnetic base, which is kind of cool. Oh. And uh, another really cool thing, too, on these mini ITX boards is this little small, what we call FPS2 add-in card. And so this little add-in card um, would actually dock in on the board like this. It will actually give you additional connectors. So, so you have two more USB 2 ports. You're gonna have some front panel leads on there. You'll have more SATA ports. Uh, you even have this little switch, which is also something you'll find on the Maxim series boards and also on the highest end dash E board, which is called the alteration mode. So this is pretty crazy. Um, a lot of small form factor builds, they tend to use now what are called riser cables. Mm -hmm. So some people use these when they're doing like a vertical mount for their builds. The cool thing with this alteration mode switch is that you can toggle this between different PCI Express modes. Again, this is kind of just attention to detail to hopefully streamline the experience and just make it better for you. Probably one of the last features here I wanna talk about that I think is pretty cool and again, is really in alignment with the impressive kind of performance and the overclocking capability that we're seeing on 13th gen is gonna be ASUS AIOC. Let's say I buy like a 13600K, a 13700K, a 13900K, and then maybe I pair it up with something like our ROG Ryogen 360, mm -hmm. or maybe you have a custom water cooling. It doesn't matter. The moment that you put that CPU in, and then you actually run an application to create what's called the heat load, we'll track all of this information for you. So we'll know essentially how hot your system's getting. And based off of that temperature, we'll automatically define an overclock for you. We'll automatically go in there and set what's called a per core overclock. So that means we maintain efficiency because the CPU will still actually come down to a idle low frequency, sure. consuming less power and less voltage. But the moment that it's actually gonna ramp up, let's say into a game or an application, you get those increased overclocked values. Hmm. And because we also do what's called a per core overclock, we're also not leaving what's called frequency on the floor. So that means that we could go from say that 5.8, maybe you're gonna see 5.9, maybe you're gonna see six gigahertz base enabled overclocks and it's done all automatically for you. It's great to see that ASUS is planning ahead and trying to make overclocking in all regards easier, safer, and uh, more effective. 
Yeah, and um, you know, definitely for those of you that are also, of course, watching the channel right now, make sure to go ahead and check out our build video where we'll actually maybe do a little bit of a live overclocking at the end, taking one of these boards and a 13 gen series CPU to see actually what that looks like in a real high-end gaming system. Oh my God, I am very excited to see that. Thank you for joining us here at New Egg Studios. Thank you, JJ, for your time. I learned a lot about 13th gen Intel, about the Z790 motherboards, and about Asus, ROG, and Tough Gaming. I hope you did too. Until the next one, for Newegg Studios, I'm Ben Tibbles. Have a great one.